All right, let's start off with a divine warning. Okay, a divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind of their forefathers, divine and national principles that they will be law abiders and receive their divine rights as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings. No. They are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the Moorish Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens, and they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege, as has been the existing condition for many generations. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law. In the city hall and among the officials in your government, ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply, for they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money doesn't make the man. It is the free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of, a, of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work, because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. I'm depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. Go up. I love my people and I desire their unity and mind back to their own national and divine standard because day by day, they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are uncon unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, and Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of the law by name and principles, because mm, standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro dilutes in the Latin language to the word nigga, the same as the word color dilutes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizen of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that uh, all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they lived. The 14th and 15th amendments brought to the North and Southern unit, placing the Southerners who were at the time without power with the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal since that constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation 
of our people and citizens. You got it? So there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost. And as through the above statements, then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills and neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by my citizens or by the citizens of my people in this government, the worst is yet to come because the great God of the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people. And this is great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, diseases, etc. And I, the prophet, do hereby believe that this administration of government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of man that have never done any good but always harmed them. So I, the prophet, hereby uh, am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me remove this great sin which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not true and divine way and without understanding they have fallen from this true light into utter darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today that would recognize them socially, religiously, politically, economically, etc. And their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world, they will not refrain from their sinful ways of action. And their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerners for all these great misuses. But I have traveled in the South and examined conditions there. And as the works of my people continuously practicing these things that which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. And I am hereby calling to all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me and my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light from the prophet. Islam. Peace and love to Trayel and Mataz Majiel. Peace and love. Peace and love, folks. Peace and love. Peace and love, Morris. Trayel, how you been, man? Let's see. Oh, I've, I've been good, brother. Been, uh, I've been staying busy as usual, but I took a couple of days off because it was my, uh, uh, how, how do you call it when you say the different return. term for uh -huh. the birthday? Yeah, solar return? Yeah, yeah, that was the time, yeah. So, oh, man, I hope you had a, had a beautiful time, man. Yes, uh, solar return. Yeah, hope you oh, had a yeah, beautiful time. Think, you spent time with the family? <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I stay with the family, man. So I uh, had some good time with the family, had some relaxed time, too. Needed to. So. So, yeah, I, I, I've been good, though. Still still on everything like a like a uh, need to be. So I'm a I'm a chop it up with you, too, soon on the side. But, yeah, I've been I've been doing pretty good, bro. How about yourself? Pretty good, man. Can't complain. We had a beautiful event yesterday. It was a great turnout. Um, I told you I got the car situation going on, so that's doing a rental car. But I, that popped off, it's popping off. We had another booking. Yeah. Matter of fact, well, while we was at the event, somebody came and booked the car, got the lot box, um, and picked it up. You know what I mean? So I felt good about that. So... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and much other things. We got, you know, we got more stuff. We talk about more on the back end. Uh, let me greet the brother out there, Andre. Your brother Andre in here for our continued demonstration. I'm trying to get him in here. Yeah, Andre. I don't even see him. Is it still like connecting? 
Mm-hmm. Maybe you still connect, and that's what it is. But um, all right. We uh will continue from where we left off with the light of Egypt. We're dealing with karma. We'll transition from that um to a Vedic astrology book. We'll transition from that from where we left off with the 12 powers of the man. So we'll transition from that to some other stuff. And uh, once again, any questions, just put them out there, statements, and we'll we'll get into it. Chapter three, dealing with karma. If we are ever to know anything clearly, we must be released from the body. That the soul by itself may see things by themselves as they really are. A little quote from Socrates before we get into the main piece. We need scarcely say that we fully agree with the above remarks of the Plato teacher, Plato's teacher. While in the body, we are completely fenced in by the loose of appearances. And had the Greek sage or sage been alive today, those prominent individuals who so loudly and ghibli speak and write upon the subject of karma would have been greatly inconvenienced by the Athenian terrible logic. Karma is the law of consequence of merit and demerit. So, right, you're going through life <clears throat> with merit, morals. You know, you, you're willing to help the people, enlighten them, unify. You're going to get karmic, a karmic response to that. On the contrary, on the other side, it's going to happen if you harming people and doing bad to people. What you, what you think is going to happen as the years go on in your life? Right? Uh, let me just agree there. Indigo, peace and love, Shalom Bay, brother Shalom. Oh yeah, peace and love. Man, that's the black belt. That's the movie. Love, peace there. and love. Sorry, I'm late. Okay, peace and love. It's all good. Peace and love, man. Love, peace and love. That's love the black family. belt, Mufti. Yeah, Shalom Bay. That's the black belt, man. He, if you check out his page, he gonna he's gonna oh, catch him doing a roundhouse kick. <laughs> don't catch him, you know, doing scissor kicks, looking like Johnny Cage on Mortal Kombat. You go see that type of stuff. I appreciate it. I'm just, I'm just doing what I love. I'm trying to just get better. That's all. That's awesome. Yeah, DL Black Belt too, man. Where are you at again? Sorry. What territory are you in again? I'm, I'm out in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna link up, man. We're gonna start doing some. Some yeah. some meetings where we, cause we got a lot of out of state out of state members. Really, we got to come together and do something, man. Mm-hmm. Have a physical meeting. I definitely, I got to come out to y'all too. Yeah, man. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we got karma is the law of consequences of merit and demerit, says the Buddhists. It is that force which molds our physical destiny in this world and regulates our period of misery or happiness in this world to come or in the world to come. We are also further informed that karma is the cold, inflexible justice which meets out to each individual the exact same measure of good and evil at his physical rebirth that he measured to his fellow man in this. Not only so, but this karma at death remains somewhere or other down upon the astral planes of the planet, like an avenging demon waiting anxiously for the period of the vachanic happiness to come to an end in order to reproject the poor, unfortunate soul once more into the magnetic vortices of material and incarnation. Where with this load of bad karma hanging in a milestone around his neck, it will, in all human probability, generate a still greater load of this theological dogma. And consequently, at each rebirth, it will sink deeper unless the spiritual ego can bring it to some consciousness of its fearful and sinful state. 
So if we're going too far off track, that means we're not listening. Because believe it or not, when you go astray, you know you're going astray. Like, so <laughs> something deep down inside, like, man, I got to get my act together. If you don't listen to that, you're going down the rabbit hole. How this may transpire is not very satisfactorily explained. If the human soul only receives punishment for the sins and wrongs it inflicted upon an another's during a previous life, then surely the soul, when it first became incarnated, must have started on its human journey without any karma to suffer for. One is naturally led to ask, then, how it first began to commit sin. But we are distinctly told that what we now suffer at the hands of others is only a just repayment for our own past sins. If then we had no past sins, we should be perfectly free from trouble. We are distinctly taught that the first or pre-adamant men, i.e. those of the golden age, were perfect. How then did the abominable karma get a start in the world? This question it is our duty to fully explain in the present chapter. We have given a general idea of the karma and theosophical Buddhism. And before revealing the origin of this oriental delusion, we will present the hermetic doctrine of karma. Of course, we've done the word hermetic principles. It's always in play. So we got one. Karma is not an active principle, but on the contrary, it is crystal, it is a crystal, it is crystallized forced. It is the picture gallery of cosmic play of nature. Two, karma constitutes the scenery essence and mental imagery of a person's past existence. It is a picture of their acts while on earth that become living realities to them in the soul world. Three, the karmic sphere of an individual's existence exists as the astral life currents along which the soul has traveled and which become crystallized forms expressive of the actions and motives which prompt them. Therefore, our past karma constitutes the soul's past history and the astral light and can be deciphered by the properly trained lucid and even by some mediumistic clairvoyance. Four, karma is the offspring of everything. Everything possesses periodical records, Pictorial. pictorial records, or when I hear this, I'm thinking uh, Akashic records too, right? Uh, memory in your DNA from, from the past, of its past evolution, stones, plants, animals, and men. It is by means of this karma that the psych psychometric sensitive can read the unwritten past, small karmas. Without karma, powers of psychometry would be useless. On a grander scale, exists the karma of moons, planets, suns, and systems, races of men, species of animal, and classes of plants also evolve special racial karmas, which constitute the astral world. Five, the harmonious the harmonies and discords of cosmic evolution generate their special karma, just the same as thoughts and emotions produce corresponding reactions. So your, your thoughts and emotions, which dictate your mood, is going to cause a reaction of somebody that's viewing, viewing your state, viewing your being. They're going to see, oh, man, okay, something's wrong with him or her, so they're gonna respond to you accordingly. It's just, you know, that's where your aura comes from, like your thoughts, your emotional state. You have this force field now that you can't see, but people can feel it when they come into your sphere. Good vibes, bad vibes, that's what most people say today. They call it a vibe. Vibration. The vibration, right? But they got even more slang term, right? Yeah. Most people, <clears throat> If they're not in depth as us in this space, they'll still say, oh, man, my vibe. I got good vibes. Or that wasn't a good vibe. That wasn't a good vibe. We're going to leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people people get it. We're just going a little more in depth. And how we can control our vibe 
by controlling our inner self, our inner universe. You can control your polarity, your magnet, your magnetic pool of what gravitates to you. That's the magi right there. When you can control what is being gravitated to you, that's power. There's power in that, right? Brother Benjamin Bay, peace and love. Peace and love, Benjamin Bay. All right, so we peace got... Peace and love, Morse. That's loud. Peace and love. Number six. Karma is obviously confined to the realms of astral light and consequently is always subjective. Therefore, karma can exist only as long as the soul which generates it is attached to the same planet. When a soul leaves the planet, its karma disintegrates. A soul cannot carry its karma around the universe with it. Because this astral light differs in quality and degree upon each separate orb. And chapter two went into that more in depth. Seven. When a soul enters the spiritual states of the soul world, which Buddhists term devotion, the power of its earthly karma can never retract it to earth. It influences over the soul. Its influence over the soul is forever lost. The lower can never control the higher. When once they exist apart, to assert that past fossilized karma can re-attract the soul from the realms of spiritual happiness and re-project -proje re it into the mirror of earth is to exalt matter to the throne of deity and degrade pure spirit to the level of passive brute substance. So, back to what we talk about in chapter two and chapter one, the mere fact that we can see each other, we're in our grossest form, our grossest state. So it's about ascending. Once you're ascending, you're tapping into things you can't see. So therefore, when you're talking about matter, to exalt matter to the throne of deity, now we're saying you're going to say your flesh is on the same vibr vibratory level of things you can't see with the naked eye. And that's just not the case. Things you can't see with the naked eye, communications, uh, et cetera, are at a higher vibration than the grossest form. So it's the opposite, right? Our job is to ascend up. From the above seven statements, it will be seen that the hermetic initiates assert that karma is not the primary law of consequence and destiny. It is not an active principle always at work, readjusting nature's ridiculous mistakes. Nature never made a mistake. Nature never yet made a mistake. Right? So nature is on point. Humans make the mistake because of their ego, their pride, their lust. Right? Selfishness. But nature is on point. Spring, summer, winter, you can count on that. It's never going to let you down. It's never going to let you down. When you sleep, inhale, exhale. Your body doing that on cruise control. On the contrary, karma is shown to be a result, the subjective outcome of innumerable laws and forces. And in this life, it is utterly powerless to affect either good or evil, so far as our destiny is concerned upon the external plane. But upon the exterior plane, that is, upon or within the astral sphere of the disembodied soul world, this karma becomes the book of life, from which all our actions in this world are judged. Once you have this carnal experience, all your actions and deeds add up to something. Back to all our great people, all our sultans, high priests, emperors, great men and women that built inventions, back to the empires and kingdoms that we created. Great men, Noble Juali, Yahshua, Muhammad, Buddha, amongst others. There's a lot of great men. Why, why are these men considered great? Our women, we have great women too. Queen Dodo, 
Nefertiti. Don't get it twisted like it was just men. We had great people do great things when they're having this temporary physical experience. You know what I mean? Um, let me get Brother Hassan to up. Oh, he didn't get the he didn't get the log in. All right, so this is this is our duty to do great things because after after all, that's what human means. We we went through the etymology, compound word, hue, to invoke. Right, God takes you to who? To invoke. Man means to think. Invoking thought. When you're invoking thought, you're manifesting. You're always plotting and planning and creating. And as the years go on, it's like, oh man, all this great work didn't got built up. This is beautiful. What? It all starts from a right. And it takes unity too. A lot of you gotta unite to do great things at a faster clip. Well, you can do great things on a on the solo, but it's already been tested that community trumps. Solo thing. I have a question. Oh, I got it. Go ahead. Okay, go, I'm gonna go for a little bit. Um, I think it was number, I think number six, talking about the astral light. Um, let's see, and it's saying you're talking about the planets. I know we're talking about like um, you have to tap into like the frequency of like the planets, and that's where the arch arch angels come from. Yep. Right. And it says, um, let me see, the soul cannot carry its karma around the universe because this astral light differs. So when you tap in to a different frequency, you pretty much, you're just on that level now. Like you can't. You're on, you're on another level. You're on another level. I'm on a new level. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, you do that through like meditations and certain like practices to get on that, to tap in yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Mastering your emotions. Uh, now you that's what that's what you know that's why us as a people original people of the planet meditation was very key in what they call religion today we just call it a culture or realignment because now when you at rest your mind is at ease you're not stressed the you can unfold you can unfold like in circle seven you can actually um control your emotions even just through your breath because when your emotions change your breathing changes with it your breathing gets more shallow so that's why meditation usually people pair it with like breath work and stuff because um, it helps them to get more oxygen in so that way you're more clear in your thinking too and then you could ascend pretty much like you can get to that and then realign but it takes like practice you have to practice that it's like a, it's like a daily practice you have to do mm -hmm. But you start to see the changes after that. Anuna, that's Peace and love. Peace and love. Uh, how everybody feeling on this? Anybody want to chime in on this? On this space? Where we uh, I'm transition. Uh, yeah, so like just a little overview so it's kind of like uh and fill me in if i'm missing some, some spots so it's like karma has to do with like you know just your natural spirit and it also is connected with your with your thoughts and uh are, are those the two, two two main points i feel like i might be missing one but i think those were uh, probably like the two biggest ones in that overview. Am I wrong? You kind of breaking that. What was the, what was the two bullet points you said? Can you, oh, can can you hear me clearly, or am I? Yeah, you, yeah, you a lot better now. Yeah. Up? No, you good now. Oh, okay. I was saying, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like we're like the two main points, like in the karma um situation is basically it's it's connected to like you know your life and just your natural uh spirit and the journey that you have to go through but it is also uh, connected to to your thoughts <laughs> and your motives yes. and i was saying um is that yeah i was saying is that is that the 
kind of two main points or am I missing one? I think you summarized it pretty good. That's a good, that's a good take, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You know, the way I see it, the way I see it is like, um, so before we enter into like this vessel, right. We are just like energy. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you enter into the vessel and then it was even in the book, it was talking about, um, this, you said it's like our grossest form, right? Mm -hmm. So we, like you said, we have to work our way up, which is like where the thoughts and emotions or controlling that comes from. And you can control that and align better then that's because it's like a vertical, right? We're vertical beings. So if we can align that better with our thoughts and emotions, you can ascend easier. And that's why also eating well too is important. Not even just like the emotional and like just the that space, but eating well to keep your body clean, so that way you can tap into realign. Because all the, we're we're a whole human being. We're not just only like the spirit and the soul, but we also have to take care of our physical bodies too in order to tap in. Because you can't really, if you're if you're battling with sickness and things like that, it's hard to it's hard to tap into that. Sometimes you got to keep yourself clean, you know. So that's that's something that you know I've learned over time because. Yeah, I used to not eat clean. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the thoughts on this space for uh, transition. And uh, peace and love. I'm not quite sure who uh, TCL50XE5G is, but peace and love. Glad you made it in Jai Bay. Peace and love. Got a new phone, Mafia. That's got a new phone. Oh, that's uh, but that song was a piece of love, man. Piece of love. Can you hear me, Ma? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I can hear you real yeah, good, that's man. The TCL joining, that's me. That's I got a new phone. Oh, yeah, I, I see the I lyrics. Got, I got a new phone. That's me. Yeah, you looking real, you looking real yeah, clear, I got man. Yeah, I, I got a, you know, the Zoom I just downloaded on here. That's what's up. Okay. Glad, glad you made it, man. Um. <clears throat> all right, so let's... Oh, Jabet, you got something? Go ahead, brother. You got something? No, I was just saying peace and love to y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Peace, peace and love, brother. Peace and love. Uh, okay. I like what Indigo says. Oh, yeah, and Indigo, too. A oh, peace and love for Nuna. And uh, Indigo was saying that, uh, and this was, that's why I say this is divine, because you know, people could relate to it. Just yesterday, she was telling her daughter about the breath, you know, as a mirror of our of our emotions. So back to the Quran, how we bound it by a cord. You know, the, we in the Moore's paradigm, so it'd be similar parallels with, you know, because she out there, Arizona, we out here, Cali. Same mind, though, we, you know, same frequency, right? Because we, as more as I study more, as we get into this, we're attempting to get more information, concepts, get our character right. So that's why the community is imperative of like-minded people because it just compounds what we can do at a faster clip, no matter what we put our mind to. Uh, so I'm going to transition. This book is this book reference is called The Perfect Matrimony. If anybody wanted to tap in and get this on their own, this book is called The Perfect Matrimony. I'm going to read a little bit of this book. So the teachings of the Zen Avesta. Look that up. You see, that's a, it's considered a holy book. Contain the Christ principle in our in accordance with the doctrine principles contained in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The Liliad of Homer in the Hebrew Bible, the Dramatic Eda, and the Sibylline books of the Roman contain the same Christ principle. All these are sufficient in order to demonstrate that Christ precedes Jesus. So I'm going to stop here for a minute. In this book, they're saying that the Christ principle was around before Yahshua was around. So Jesus Christ is not the same. That's that Back to the Nicene Council. They took two stories and merged them, the Christ principle and then the work that Yahshua actually did. It's really two separate concepts. Christ is not one single individual. 
Christ is a cosmic principle that we must assimilate within our own physical, psychic, somatic, and spiritual nature through sexual magic. Hmm. So just a little bit, when they get into this space, just know the attraction of man and woman can be used to do great things. You don't even necessarily have to have sex. It's just the attraction, the, the stimulation. It's the energy. Yeah. And once you have that buildup, that those fluids that are used to make a baby, right? If you don't secrete, or it just builds up. Now it's traveling up your back into your abdomen. Medulla Abangata, symbolized by the serpent. Um, so when you're not using it just like anything, if you're not abusing anything, everything in moderation, it can enhance you. So this is the perspective that we're talking about here. Among the Persians, Christ is our moose, or a Mazda, the terrible enemy of our Aramin or Satan, which we carry within. Among the Hindus, Krishna is Christ. And the gospel of Krishna is very similar to that of Jesus of Nazareth. Among the Egyptians, Christ is Osiris. And whoever in incarnated him was in fact Osirified, the an Osirified one. Among the Chinese, the cosmic Christ is Fushi who composed the I Ching. And just to, because my mind went here, when we talk about the old mechs that traveled to Manchuria, which is really the Fusheng dynasty, this was the culture that the Moors were, this is the tip we were on in 1500 BC and was now called China. On top of the fact, like my brother Shaolin Bay, we initiated and established martial arts as a discipline which really go hand in hand with yoga. That's wanted to throw that out there. A little side stuff. That had nothing to do with this book per se, but it's just on my mind. So I put it out there in the ethers. I Ching, the book of laws and appointed dragon ministers. Dragon ministers. That serpent, here go that snake. That in the commercial dogmatic way, they're going to make the snake look like, oh, it's evil. Right? But whenever you're looking at the snake or the dragon, we're dealing with ascension, kudalini. So it's not arbitrarily the dragon minister. Why do they call the dragon minister? Not the turtle minister or the rabbit ministers, right? So among the Greeks, Christ is called Zeus, which we know is Jupiter, father of the gods. <laughs> among the Aztecs, Christ is Quasicotl, the Mexican Christ. In the Germanic Eda, Baldur is the Christ who was assassinated by Hodur, the god of war, with an arrow made from a twig of mistletoe, etc. We can cite we can cite the cosmic Christ within thousands of ancient texts and old traditions which hail millions of years before Jesus. So all this was million. That's why we. That's why I heavily em emphasize when we had civilizations, Mayans, Aztecs. Oh, well, it's really the Fushang or the Omex. This is before Christ. It's BC. So we had culture before Yahshua. Before religion. Before, religion, before modern day religion, we had culture. Culture predates religion. Religion is an aspect of culture. For our people that fail from the culture, we had to get them, give them some instruction on how to get their life back in order. Millions before. Uh, can I uh, add on? Millions of years. For a sec? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Go ahead, brother. You muted yourself, too. Oh, there you go. Oh, um, uh, yeah, and I was saying, like, uh, like you were saying about the non being religious, it goes back like the Christ like conscious that you were saying that is in all these different cultures is basically like, you know, the conscious of righteousness. You know what I mean? So 
good and evil, you know, good would be the righteous. And what Christ was supposed to represent, it's not supposed to represent a religion because religion is when man gives inputs and, and add-ons to different laws and different principles, you know? So I just wanted yep. to add that in there. Yep. Yeah, that's a good take. But yeah, it's flowing nicely. Appreciate it. Oh yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. Mm -hmm. Um, this invites us to accept that Christ is a cosmic principle. Back to nature's law. We saying cosmic. We saying nature. We want to be in harmony with nature. That's a summary. Just to summarize, rather, is the cosmic principle contained within the essential principles of all religions, like we just said. So the the essential principle in all religions is what culture. You just be pretty much just said that before you even read this. This religion assumes different forms according to the times and needs of humanity. So let's give an example. Every time had a period where our people went astray and here come this messengers of the, of the light. What is a messenger of the light? What is that? That's a prophet. A prophet is. So the reason these prophets came forth because our people were in a terrible condition. Like, and we needed to have a beacon light to be like, look, man, here's the instructions on how to correct your ways. So this sentence is that's what that's saying. According to the times and needs of humanity, it was a need for a prophet to come and bestow the light. Therefore, religious conflicts are an absurdity because in essential, in essence, all religions are only modifications of the universal cosmic religion. Back to what we were saying. Culture first, nature's law first, religion second. Religion is only necessary for people that don't understand the hermetic laws. Don't know how to be human. They're in a low vibrational state, so they need instruction from our brother's keepers to get back right. Oh, peace and love, uh, Justin Bay. Peace and love, Justin. Well, I keep calling him Justin Bay. He got a different title. Oh, yeah. Peace and love. Peace and love. It's wrong. Peace and love. Yasir. Yasir Bay. Yasir Bay. I'm so used to saying Justin Bay, man. I'm so used you know to what? it. We're going to need you to change your name. That's I why. Know, I know. Right? <laughs> You're going to need to do that right I'm now. Here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure that out to be here. That's all good, man. Slime, everybody. Slime. So, from this point of view, we affirm that this book is not against any religion, school, or system of thought. The only objective of this book is to give humanity a key, sexual secret, a key with which every living being may assimilate the Christ principle contained within the essence of all the great religions of the world. But once again, religion is only for people that fell astray so far that they got to get <laughs> instructions. Uh, who came here? Oh, Brother Salim. Peace and love. I think that was Salim. Oh, yeah. Oh, brother, yeah. yeah brother Salim, peace and love, peace man. And love. Glad you made it, man. Um, <clears throat> so we may recognize Jesus, which we just covered Zeus as Jupiter, or right, it depends on what what religious lens you're looking through, as the new Superman who totally assimilated Christ's principle, in fact, became God man. Or like I say, demigod. That's another way. We believe we should imitate him. He was a complete man, a true man in the fullest sense of the word. Yet through sexual magic, he managed to completely assimilate the universal cosmic Christ principle. And like we just said earlier, it's not necessarily practicing abstinence. It's more about allowing yourself to charge if necessary. And that's on the individual base. Right. To tap in to the higher heavens. Everything above the solar plexus, all the degrees above the solar plexus, heart chakra, pineal, crown chakra. We want to tap into that space and stay in that. We want to stay in heaven. We don't want to stay in hell. We don't want to maintain the root chakra and that's it. 
The root chakra is necessary. You need that. As a def defense mechanism. Somebody, you might got to protect yourself. You might got to tap into the root and get real earthly on people. But for the most, <laughs> for the most part, you want to stay in your higher self, right? Um, so it's not like it's bad to know, you know, you just don't want to stay in that space. What are they walk up? Those few who are very comprehensive must study the gospel of John chapter three, verses one through 21. There the devotee of the perfect matrimony will find pure and legitimate sexual magic as taught by Jesus. Obviously the teaching is in code. That's the parable. When they're saying it's in code, that's the parable because most people don't have the uncut information. So when they see the parable, they see what, oh, okay, it just referencing the uncut information. If you don't have the uncut information, now it's a code and you getting rocked to sleep of the story, parable. You're thinking this is a, you know. But modern humanity has committed the mistake of separating the great master Jesus from all his predecessors who, like him, also Christified themselves. That's why Yahshua said, What I can, what I do, all man can do. I'm not exempt. I'm human just like you. I just ascended internally. I'm no different from you. This is what has damaged this present humanity. We need to increasingly comprehend that all religions are only one religion. Mary, mother of Jesus, is the same as Isis, Juno, Demeter, Ceres, Maya, the cosmic mother or Kudalini sexual fire, from whom the cosmic Christ is always born. Mary Magdalene is the same as Salambo, Metris, Estar, Astarte. So now we're talking about Venus. If we don't know the uncut that we're just talking about Venus, we're going to get rocked to sleep with the whole Mary. Oh, Mary. It's a principle. Same thing with Estar or Astarte. That's where you get Astarte is where you get Eastern Star or the Star of the East. Now you got the Masonic Lodges. Now you got all this stuff. And most of our people don't even know the origin. Once you know the origin, none of this stuff is impressive to you. You're not getting rocked to sleep. You can use these tools appropriately. The martyrs, saints, virgins, angels, and cherubim are the same gods, demigods, titans, goddesses, sylphs, silops, and messengers of the gods from the pagan mythology, messengers of the light. But once, once the Elohim messages get to the human, the human is the conduit and becomes the prophet. He's allowing the truth to come through him out his lips to the people that have been severely in a low, low vibrational state. All religious principles of Christianity are pagan. And when the present religions, religious forms disappear, their principles will be assimilated by the new religious forms for, for the future. So back to what the brother said about it's a difference between culture and man-made um, concepts of religion. That's why we say we don't need a middleman if we Gnostics. We don't need a middleman we don't need to, for example, not knocking the church or knocking any institution, religious institution, but it's, it's clearly a middleman, whether they call it rabbi, reverend, preacher, whatever the case may be, that's giving their take on the book. And they're telling their flock, their congregation, you know, emotionally, like, you know, they say a couple lines, but they're not diving into it to this level. Even though they might know the information to this degree. But they're giving their congregation a more watered down version of it. Typically, it's for monetary reasons to pacify the emotional state, have them all falling out, and all this type of craziness. Um, this was this was where I was going to uh, stop with this particular segment. Any any discussion or um, any thoughts about this space before we transition? What? What is sex magic, Mafi? What is that? Is that like semen retention? What is sex magic, bro? Exactly. You pretty much, your intuition took you there. Mm -hmm. So once you um, allow that fluid of the land of milky honey, the land of milk and honey, once you allow that to build up up the back. Mm -hmm. uh, that caused so much, 
like that causes so much discord in your in your household, man. Because you know your significant yeah. other, she not in tune with that. She gonna want, you know what I'm saying? Intimacy. Like, how do you think that I go about making that happen without her being upset? Like, how can I explain it to her so she can understand? Because like a lot of women are very aggressive when it comes to intimacy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like and that's. Not, Giving them none, they get cranky, all that stuff, or think you dealing with somebody else and all that. You know what I'm saying, Moff? Oh yeah, yeah. That that that's why, in a perfect world, both parties will be on the same ascension level. But of course, you know, if if your partner can't relate to this space, correct, um, then yeah, you gonna have some discord. But you know. The whole thing is to try to try your best to explain like why are we gonna go through this. It's not forever. We ain't going months and years. We just want let's try this out for a week or two. Let's just let's just see. You know, when genius comes out of this, you know, genius thoughts, different way of looking at stuff. You know, um, strength. Hey, right Can I put the crayons out? Out? You got something? Hey, go ahead. Okay, so. Um, I've kind of looked into this space a little bit when it comes to like sex magic and it's not being abstinent. It's not straying away from the intimacy. It's learning to, to build on the energy with each other because, you know, when you're intimate with someone, you're both energy, right? But in physical form. So it's, it's learning to meditate through the practice so you can build up the energy, but you do not release you don't want to get to the point of releasing or getting too close to releasing. And that's how you build up the retention. You still practice. It's actually like a daily practice you do, right? So you don't, you won't get cranky, any of that stuff. But it's when you commit to that, it's work. It's not just, you know, oh, for pleasure anymore. It's like you are both consciously working on building up your energy so you can ascend. Because when you think about it, when men and women are going together, the energy is going like this, right? When the when the man's inside the woman, the energy's flowing like this if she's on top, right? So then just kind of getting deeper into it. But you the semen retention, you you don't you don't go abstinent. You're you're actually doing that with your partner. But you get into you want to get into a meditative state first before you even do the physical act. You need to get your own energy right first. So that that may be breathing, doing some kind of meditation before, right? And then kind of just building up the energy before you exchange the energy. And while she's helping you build up your energy for the semen retention, you're also helping her build up her energy. And that's through the breath, right? Because breath is life force, breath is energy, right? So you're cycling through like that. There's actually a photo. Um, there's a page I follow. It's called Cosmic Sexuality on Instagram. And they talk about this. They talk about the energy, the energy swapping and how to retain the semen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the brother Jonas Brinkley. Oh, so you, so, oh, no. so one, let me you, ask y'all this. So you, you well, one second, Hassan. No, because I I'm looking at the chat. He asked a question. He said, "Is it like foreplay?" So I would say, "Yeah." Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like foreplay. And also, I would say you're not you're not uh, releasing. Mm -hmm. You're not. You can you can have the act. You can do the act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're just not releasing. But you don't even want to get close. To releasing there's a there's a it's a practice you have to practice it yeah, because they say, say that's actually dangerous they say it's, it's, if you're practicing semen retention and every time you get into the physical act and you're close to releasing they say that's actually dangerous because the semen goes right back in like too quickly or something like that but you want to get to a place where you're building up your energy through the breathing and through the physical act that's how you get the semen retention so she holds back as well yeah. Yeah. Both of both parties it, hold back. Actually, you're in the act. Yeah. You know but what you mean? don't want to get. It. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I want you to finish your yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard. Um. I've heard it's kind of like the onk, where you basically you're building all your energy from your root, mm -hmm. and it's almost like an orgasm, and it goes all the way mm -hmm. up to the crown, and then you basically bring it back down to the heart. So it's kind of like. You're building it from here and you're putting all that energy and it's going back to your crown and it's going back to your heart. And it's like almost like they almost say it's like immortality or something where it comes to mm -hmm. that. But I've never um, I've never done that before, but I've heard of something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a they call it like a cosmic yeah. orgasm. 
yeah, cosmic, yeah, like, cosmic yeah. orgasm. It's like it's a very spiritual. It's not just the physical. You're tapping into your breathing, your emotions. You're connecting. Both of you guys at the same time are connecting to like a higher. You know, mm -hmm. you're ascending uh, together yeah, pretty much. In orgasm, it's not like a yoga, is it? Yeah, tantra right. yoga. Yeah, it's kind of like yoga, that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If the, or, yeah. if the orgasm is supposed to be avoided, why does it feel so good? And then that's orgasm, you talk about. Right. And about orgasm faith. shouldn't be it's the ejaculation that they're talking orgasm about. Orgasm is supposed to be hell. Why does it feel so good when it come out? What is something <laughs> about? Uh, they saying, like, imagine how good it's going to feel after you've been holding it for two weeks. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, I think it's like, more the energy. Like, is it, or is it the, back yeah, into your, like, into your, mm -hmm. your, your heart or something? It's more mm -hmm. like a, uh, you go, you you going from the root to the mm -hmm. crown to the heart, and you coming back around and you putting all that energy back into your heart, like you're like in the middle. You know what I'm saying? That connects everything. So it's like an orgasm into your heart, but it's like I heard it gives you more more life or something. You know, some people say like immortality from that, but um. Now, mm -hmm. life force energy. Yeah, bro. It's like losing your virginity again. I like this. This is good. I like this. Have Have you remember okay. in school? Remember in school, when they were saying like the your the runners high, like you might be jogging, and then it might it, you know you get this euphoria. Yeah, yeah. That, that's hey, a, that's a euphoria that's up here in the heavens. That when you actually ejaculate and secrete, that's a euphoria from the root. So that it's the same feeling, just in different areas. Like you can just be feeling good. Like man, I'm feeling good today. Like you know what I mean. Like I'm ready to get creative. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm ready to make something happen. I'm ready to make a song. I'm ready to, you know, create a business. Like you, you get more yeah. passionate about things. You know, you, you like you feeling good just to live, just to walk. Like, man, it's beautiful yeah. outside. The leaves, the sky, more beautiful. Like like you on shrooms almost, almost yeah. <laughs> natural. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know That's what the schools feel like. I ain't never done that before. Bro. Oh, well, yeah, you, know, you, you tapping in. Everybody everybody I see doing, they be bugging, bro. Like, I ain't really. They, they abuse it. Yeah, you, can't, abuse. you can't abuse it. They've been seeing the little people and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like, I'm not with that, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah, they abuse it, man. Uh, okay. I do want to answer the... Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, oh, go ahead. No, it was somebody, the brother in the chat. Um, by the way... um. You want all the way up, you get all the way down. It's a brother in here that I did. Uh, what's his name? Oh, yeah. So Jonas Brinkley, he's been incarcerated for 25 years. He tapped, he's tapped in right now. That's the brother that asked the question about. Um, he's talking about the sex man. Yeah, but I, I like what he put in the chat. He said, he looked it up, obviously. Sex, ma sex magic, sometimes called sexual magic or sexual energy work. Is a practice that it involves using sexual energy and intention to manifest desired outcomes mm -hmm. or achieve spiritual goals. It has roots in various spiritual and mystical traditions, including tantric practices, hermeticism, right? Hermeticism is a little hermetic, hermetic principles, and Western occult traditions. Here's a basic overview. Um, so I, I just wanted to wanted to say that and he amongst other things he put uh That's the first he got a, he got a whole list so just check out the chat mm -hmm. but uh yeah that's the brother he tapped in last week and like I say he you know he'd been down 25 years he's tapped into the more science he reached out to me so I want everybody to say peace and love to the brother man uh, you know mm -hmm. Anybody that do more than a year in prison, that you know you're a strong brother, man. Yeah, brother. Welcome yeah. back to your land, brother. Welcome back to it's your land. land. Islam. It's it's love, more. Back to your oh, land, yeah. brother. Yeah. Islam. Islam. Mm -hmm. He's still in. He's still in there right now. Yeah. Peace and love. Peace and love, brother. Peace, peace. Uh, yeah, peace, peace and love. Man, that's hard. He's still. In, he's still in there right now. He in the cell right now on the phone. Tapped in. Oh word! How long? How much longer you got, bro? Loose. I mean, I come back up for a parole in twenty twenty six, but uh, I'm working on this parole lawyer, so it, you know it could be sooner. That's what's up, man. All wow. praises due to the Most High on that, brother. Oh, that's right, damn. Oh, that's that's right. Jeez. I mean, yeah.
Twenty five. Twenty five. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, everything. Yeah, I, I mean. I mean, actually, 20, 26, uh, 26, uh, been there since 14, uh, 49. Ooh. Yeah. And it's, Ooh. I locked up at 14, and he's in his 40s now. Wow. So that makes, see, that even that, that makes you look at what we're going through different. <laughs> it makes you look yeah. at, man, like, we, we should be grateful, you know, that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's nothing to be stressing over. Like, life correct. was good. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, correct. Godspeed, brother. Yeah, sir. Yeah, you're going to be home soon. That's what's up. Hold on. Uh, any other thoughts on that space before we transition? Oh, I uh, was we... going to say something about that real quick, about the uh, orgasmic uh, connection. I think that's more of a creation, to create. So I heard it's mm-hmm. a lot of good things that you do when you have orgasm, stuff like that, is to manifest. You know what I'm saying maybe write some down at the same time or just have like affirmations at the same time, you know. You know, that's like a uh, that's a very powerful uh form of energy. So uh I think that's that when you use it the right way, you know, you could do magic, you could do like almost miracles, you feel me? So mm-hmm. I'm really into this stuff. Yeah. I did want to chime in on that because um Hassan was asking why does it feel so good? Naturally, right, man and woman, the attraction to even manifest life, right? You have to be attracted to even have that happen. This is the way I'm seeing it, right? Um, And that's where the life comes out of is a woman's womb, right? That's why there's so much spiritual energy there to create life. And that's why, like what DL said, when you practice correctly, you can manifest more than just like life. You can manifest great things when you practice it correctly and do the semen retention semen retention and things like that. But that's why it feels good because we are supposed to be intimate with one another to create life. That's that's human, right? To keep it going, right? You you are supposed to release. It's just not all the time. It's still okay to release, just not as often, right? To be able to get that clarity, to have the semen retention, maybe like once a month or like whatever your goal is, right? But yeah, that, I just wanted to answer your question and kind of tap into what DL said, because sexual energy is like, like that's a really powerful energy. That's that's, that's a spiritual thing. That's that's like not even physical. It doesn't get into physical form until nine months, right? It just starts going through and everything and creating. But before that, it didn't exist, right? It existed as two halves. But so I kind of just want to say that. But yeah, I hope that kind of answered your question a little bit. Yeah, it did. Appreciate yes. that. It's blown. Well- Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so we continue where we left off. This is the 12 powers of man by the same author that I wrote the metaphysical Bible dictionary. Uh, I forgot his name. Actually, it was his name. It's brother name. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, Charles, oh, Charles Fillmore. That's the author. Charles Fillmore. He's the author of the 12 powers of man. I mean, a uh, metaphysical Bible dictionary as well. But we're dealing with strength stability steadfastness if i don't know if everybody recalls but the first couple chapters dealing with faith and belief we went from belief chapter one faith chapter two strength stability and steadfastness chapter three so when the strength when the strong man fully armed guardeth his own court his goods are in peace but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him his whole armor, wherein he trusted, and divided his spoils. Jesus gave the foregoing illustration of a strong man's being overcome by a stronger. The incident is mentioned in three of the Gospels, those of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is usually interpreted as illustrating, in a general way, the overcoming of evil, but the peculiar identification of the form of the strong man in his court or house and the necessity of overcoming him hint a deeper significance. One who has studied man as an aggression or personality. I'm sorry. One who has studied man as an aggregation of personalities readily identifies the strong man as one of the 12 foundation powers that make up the manifest man. Among the apostles of Jesus, the strong man is designated as Andrew. One of his uh, 
disciples, right? But we know this is allegorical. Brother of Peter, the Greek meaning of Andrew is strong man. The development of natural world from coarser to finer types of vegetable life and in and animal life is paralleled in many aspects in the unfoldment of man. So this is, a matter of fact, this is another literature, another reference point. The last book went into this space, The Light of Egypt, 12 Powers of Man is going into this space. When we're saying coarser to finer types, the most coarse type is the, our gross state, human form. Um, so we're going to have to have some steadfastness, conquer our lower self. That's what it's the story David and Goliath is symbolic of that. You know, you conquered a foe in the circle seven is conquering a foe. Who's that foe? Yourself. You know, getting past your carnal, carnal habits, the unfoldment of man. So the source of everything is in the realm of ideas. A knowledge of this fact coupled with faith and the working power of the unseen makes man greater than all other expressions of divine mind. However, knowledge of the law of mind evolution does not relieve man of the necessity of refining and transmuting the various types of man that he has brought forth and of which he is the epitome. So every day we're every second minute we're evolving. Um, so we're actually a different person. The person I am or the person I was a year ago, I'm not the same person. I got the same outfit on. I got the same vessel. But I have I have evolved. Why? Information that I receive. So I look at the world different. Right. Uh, certain mistakes I've made, I correct it. You only, you only know they're a mistake based on right the, what you're seeing like the the cause and effect you call you know you want to make corrections some mistakes are just are not general mistakes they just internal like things you want to perfect only you know what that is right but you a different person anybody that stays the same three years ago and the same person now that's called stagnant and that's not what we're here to be having this temporary physical experience we're here to unfold as man unfolds, as God unfolds, right? St always a student. However, knowledge of the law of mind evolution does not relieve man's of necessity of refining and transmutating. Just read that. So let me go down here. The Jehovah man is constantly making the Adam man and breathing into his nostrils the breath of life. The Adam man exists in the subconscious as a multitude of men, the wise man and the foolish man. We have all these things within us. We got wisdom and we got foolery. All is just, what do we choose to tap into? Right? Truth and falsehood strangely mixed. The one-liners in the Circle 7 Quran. It's all, it all, it all the same principles. The kind of man, the kind man and the cruel man, the loving man and the hateful man, the stingy man and the generous man, the hungry man and the fool man, the happy man and the troubled man, the weak man and the strong man, the good man and the bad man, the live man and the dead man, right? All in the same person. It's our choice. What we want to tap into the poor man and the rich man, the timid man and the courageous man, the sick man and the healthy man, the old man and the young man, the erratic man and the sane man. These and a thousand other types of man as active personalities occupy the consciousness of every human being. Every male has within him the female and every female has within him the male. They just verbalize the yin and the yang right now. That's all they just did with that sentence. This fact is admitted by physiology, sustaining the genesis record or the genetics record of the ideal creation of man as male and female in his expression in Adam and Eve, which we covered the evolution of the Adam, the book of genetics, we covered that, as the male and female in one man. The fact was corroborated by the great teacher when he said, have ye not read that who, that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female? 
The strong man fully armored referred to by Jesus is the strength and stability in man. In the natural man, he is manifest as physical strength, but in the regeneration, he is overcome and his possessions are divided or given to other faculties as a nucleus around which the higher force is gathered. The stronger than he who takes away the whole armor, and that's the whole key. When we're saying stronger than he, it's not supposed to be like that. Back to the classic example that I always give. You are getting in the car, turning the key, turning the engine on, hitting accelerate, going left, right, slowing down. You are controlling the vehicle. The vehicle is not controlling you. Same thing with your body. The vehicle is or the avatar, however you want to say it. The person that you can't really see me. I'm telling myself to move my fingers. When it gets to the point where your body is controlling you, your urges is controlling the real you, you just strip your armor. Your armor stripped. You got weak to the flesh. You're supposed to control the flesh. You can control the flesh to the point where you got you got muscles, you can go to the gym. You can you can get the body adapted to certain programs by your consistency and patterns because the human body will adapt. It's mm -hmm. very flexible. It's just about what patterns do you want to put your body in? You might start working out in the gym and be sore like, oh man, I don't know about this. You stay consistent now, you just, it's easy. You, you, you put more weight on, you, you run it up and down the court faster and all type of stuff, right? Just because you train your body. Oh, I just mentioned this too. The overcoming of Goliath by David. I swear I just said this. I didn't. I'm reading this with y'all. So the overcoming of Goliath by David illustrates the mastery of the spiritual power over the material. Goliath trusted in his armor, which represents the protective power of matter and material conditions. David, spiritual strength, had no armor or material protection. David's power was gained by trust and in divine intelligence, through which the law through which he saw the weak place in Goliath's armor. Direct to this weak place with the sling of his concentrated will, he sent a thought that shattered the forehead of the giant. This incident shows how easy it is to overcome the seemingly strong personal and material conditions when the mind of spirit is brought into action. David was sure of himself because he had slain the lion and had killed the sheep. The lion is the breast in man. When overcome or rather transmutated or transmuted to finer energy, this lion becomes a mighty soul of strength. The life of Samson, as set forth in Judges, the book of Judges in the Bible shows the different movements of strength in human consciousness and its betrayal and end. Samson did all kinds of athletic stunts, but was finally robbed of his strength by Delea, a Philistine woman who had his head shaved while he slept on her knees. Hair represents vitality. So the coarser your hair is, now you have an antenna. That's one, right? Or antennas, what do antennas do? Pick up frequencies. Like the radio station, you dial in to the, in our case, we dial in to what? The Elohim. The messages that we not we didn't necessarily at first, we're able to tap into. That's what that story represents with Goliath. Is the strength. Um, when the vital principle is taken away, the strength goes with it. The body is weakened by the, the vitalization and finally perishes. Eve, back to Adam and Eve. Eve took away the strength of Adam in like manner. And every man who gives up the vital essence of his body for the pleasure of sensation blindly pulls down the pillar of his temple as did Samson. So back to what I told you how when, you, when you're looking at the commercial Bible as it is today, King James, you're looking at a lot of things in play at once. Adam and Eve, you got the evolution of the Adam and you have another lesson. I was just saying now, once you start just anything for pleasure and carnal, you just unarmored. 
you, you know what I mean? You have no spiritual fortitude, right? So that's the whole key. It's to control the vessel. I'm going to stop right here with this segment. Any thoughts, statements, questions on this space? Will we transition? Yeah, I, I was, uh, I was going to say, so like, or is it, it's like the physical pleasure because like we were just talking about it, you know, before we was going through this, like, and through the example that he gave with um, like, like Samson and stuff, it seems to me that like, like it's a balance in everything. And it's like your attention and how you do it and what you do. <laughs> Cause like, with, like, like with him, his issue was he wasn't doing that with the right woman, you know, but like, had it been the right woman, I'm pretty sure he, you know, they could have, you know, pleased themselves and it not be like we were speaking about before, not a negative thing. So like yeah. when I was just observing this, the, the, the whole thing I was seeing in mind is in the balance in what we do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I, I agree with that. I like that. Uh, Indigo, uh, we're reading from a book called Toil Power is a Man by Charles Fillmore. Excellent book. Um, <clears throat> anybody, any else had any thought? Anybody else had any thoughts on this space? Mm -hmm. Comments? I think mm -hmm. that personally, what you just was saying, it, I, it, it resonated with me personally because I'm dealing with some uh, certain things that I like to do that I think is probably spiritually blocking me. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I appreciate the message, Islam on the message, and I yield the floor. Wow. Wow. I wanted to comment on this right here. Uh, at the last paragraph, Mafiel read, it says, And every man who gives up the vital essence of his body for the pleasure of sensation blindly pulls down the pillar of his temple. So that's like <clears throat> what we were saying, saying with the, the semen, deep. right? That's a life force. Deep. Right. And that's what they were saying. You, you can get like weak and things like that. You're giving away life force energy. Right. Because that's what's made. That's what's used to make the baby. Right. So if you're depleting yourself all the time and you're not doing the semen retention, it is hard to ascend spiritually because you keep in that, I guess, in that frequency. Right. Of just the pleasure and just the body and the physical. Right. But you have to also tap into the spiritual. Right. And I think that's what that's saying right there. Mm -hmm. is that when you keep giving off your bodily fluids then it's hard to tap into the spiritual like that mm -hmm. just like just like Hassan was just saying right now like that's I think that's what that line means mm -hmm. yep moderation mm -hmm. everything in moderation <clears throat> uh okay yeah some trans transition the reason I wanted to go into this space that I'm about to get into um, some of you guys may, uh, you know, run across this in the future or may have already run across it. Um, when you're in a Moorish paradigm, you have more that are, um, incorporated in the Moorish science temple and they have a certain way of looking at things as if, if you don't belong to the Moorish science temple of America incorporated, you can't be a true Moor. So I was going to read this. Uh, real quick, so we can comprehend and be able to talk to people. Because when you got fast turbine on, you have people from different walks of life, different interpretations. So we want to have this well-rounded information. So the more the temple and membership. This brief is in regards to many inquiries and our statements in reference to temple membership. Many grand sheiks and members of the Moors Holy Temples of science and more science temples are implying that in order to be a true more, you must be part of the more science temple or more holy temple of science. This statement and statements such as this one are misleading to the people and must be cleared up. First and foremost, I would like to identify clearly what a temple is. Most people concepts, most people's concepts of a temple is only a building made of stone, wood, etc., wherein one may enter. When in fact, this is far from the case. So let's go on into the temple. The space on either side 
of the head of man. So this is the either side of the head of man. What's in the middle? The temple. And some other mammals and some other mammals back of the eye and forehead above the zymatic arch and behind the ear. An edifice dedicated to the worship of a deity and anciently usually regarded as residing place for the deity whose presence was symbolized by a statue or other token. Any place in which the divine presence usually resides, the temple of his body. A quote from the Bible, John. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? So this stuff is in the Bible um, as well. And it's good to know these have these these uh, Bible chapters kind of like queued up to reference real quick, like real quick on the phone, like when you're talking to people, because a lot of our people are Christian. Um, so we want to relate to them and let them know you know their book, you know their book too, you know it very well. Of what it's really talking about. Excerpts from Webster's New International Dictionary of the English Language, Edifice, a building, a structure, architectural fabric, especially a large or elegant building as a palace or church. Deity, divine nature or rank, the collection of attributes which make up the nature of God, divinity, Godhead, Godhood, as the deity of the supreme being is seen in his works, a god or goddess. The deity God, the supreme being. So deity, back to the, any creation of the of the, the most high, Allah, Asar, whatever you want to call it, the the the, the creator of the heavens and earth, whatever you want to call that. Whatever manifestations that's created from the creator of the heavens and earth are called deities. The human being is a deity. You tap into the Christ, you become the demigod. We are deities within ourselves. We are planets. Everybody on this call is a planet. I'm talking Mercury. By me being Virgo, I'm Mercury. Mafi L is Mercury. For example, we're always in orbit. That's why I always say you want to keep people around you to be the best version of yourself out because you're around certain planets, certain elements. I'm also Earth. Not only am I am I talking Mercury, I'm I'm actually a talking Earth. So uh, you know, elements is key to right. What they call it in the uh, alchemy. I'm an alchemist. What makes me an alchemist is I know what potions or concoctions to make to bring the best version of myself out i.e. with people to be around the elements it's not turning water into gold that's or none of that's that's what that's how the bible portrays it but you didn't you need to know what alchemy really is um Let's go to the record and refer to our own lessons as handed down to us by Noble Jew Ali, chapter one of the Holy Quran, circle seven. But man himself is not the body, nor the soul. He is spirit and a part of Allah. But man, like other thoughts of Allah, was but a seed, a seed that held within itself the potencies of Allah. Just as the seed of any plant of earth holds deep within itself the attributes of every part of that special plant. So spirit man, as seed of Allah, held deep within himself or herself the attributes of every part of God, right? The micro, macro concept. We're the micro of the macro. Now, seed are perfect, yeah, as perfect as the source from which they come, but they are not unfolded in the life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother is. So man, the seed, must be deep planted in the soil that he might grow, unfold, as does the bud unfold to show the flower. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was fully ordained to be the Lord of plan of soul and of that of the plan of things made manifest. So Allah, the husband man, look up husband man, anybody look up husband man? It's just going to say farmer. A husband man 
is just a farmer, a cultivator. So Allah, the husband man of everything that is, threw forth this human seed into the soil of soul. It grew apace and man became a living thing and he became the Lord of all the king of soul. All these soul attributes became a body beautiful. Man is the Lord of all the plane of manifest, of protoplast, of mineral, of plant, of beast. But he gave up his birthright just to gratify his lower self. But man will regain his lost estate, his heritage. But he must do it in a conflict that cannot be told in words. What's that conflict? The conflict is eternal. It's a conflict within. Ali, who said to Mary and Elizabeth, you may esteem yourself thrice blessed for you have you are chosen mothers of long promised sons. Who are ordained to lay a solid rock, a sure foundation stone on which the temple of perfect man shall rest, a temple that shall never be destroyed. <laughs> Teach them that Allah and man are one. But through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah and disrespected himself or debased himself. Teach that the holy breath will make them one again, restoring harmony and peace. If you would ask me what to study, I would say yourselves. And when you will have studied them and then will ask me what to study next, I would reply yourselves. This right of cleaning, this right of cleansing is a preparation right. And they who thus are cleansed comprised the temple of purity. And you shall say, you men of Israel, here, reform and wash. Become the sons of purity, and you shall be forgiven. So if you see in church they washing your feet, dunking you in water, that's not, that's not going to cleanse you. That's symbolic. It's not about you getting dunked in water. That's, that's not going to do nothing. It's your deeds, your character, your actions, your morals, your thought process. Decision-making would determine if you're truly baptized and have changed from a lower, vibrat lower vibrative state to a higher vibratory state. You're washing away the old destructive thoughts. Now you're truly baptized. One day, as he was bringing forth the tools for work, he said, these tools remind me of the ones we handle in the workshop of the mind. This is Joshua talking. Where things were made of thoughts. And where we build up character, we use the square to measure our lines, to straighten our crooked places of the way and make the corners of our conduct square. Law definition of nationality, that conduct or character which determine a person to a given class. So typically people that know their nationality know their culture and they have a little more respect, morals and people that don't know. See how this is tied in? We use the hammer. We use yeah. we use the square to measure all our lines to straighten out the crooked places of the way and make the corners of our conduct square. We use the compass to draw circles, geometry, around our position, our passions and desires to keep them in the bounds of righteousness. We use the axe to cut away the naughty, useless, and ungainly parts and make the character. Symmetrical. We use the hammer to drive home the truth and pound it in until it is a part of every part. We use the plane to smooth out the rough, uneven surfaces of joint and block and board that go to build the temple for the truth. The chisel line, the plummet, and the saw all have their uses in the workshop of the mind. And then this ladder with this trinity of steps, faith, hope, and love. On it, we climb up to the dome of purity in life. On the 12-step ladder, we just got to reading the 12 powers of man. See where we're going with this? We ascend until we reach the pinnacle of that which life is spent to build the temple of perfected man. Any thoughts on this? On this space? Was it informative? We now know what the temple is. We know you're a Moor because that's your nationality. It doesn't, you don't need to be a member of the Moor Thais Temple Incorporated.
Right. The temple is not a building. It's the body. We're in temple right now on Zoom. It's the temple. There's no building. But like minds came together and we're building, but it's, it's no building, but we're building. <laughs> right? Uh, that, that, that's my, excuse my Virgo humor. Uh, you got to excuse that. <laughs> uh, so let's continue here. First, let me ask if we got any thoughts, statements, and questions before we continue on. Okay. So, let's go to the one-on-ones. Are we back now? No. Join us. Peace uh, and love. We back? Yeah, we back now? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the hot spot had died. We, we, we charging it up right now. Okay. Hey, I, 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 it wasn't in regards to what you actually read, right? Uh, but I was reading the the prayer, and you, maybe you have went over this before. But why, why does it say uh, her holy pro prophet? Why does it uh, in the Moorish prayer? Say, uh, who's that? Uh, this is Yasir. Yasir, bro. Okay, what's your question? Uh. <clears throat> In the Moorish prayer, why, why does it say at the end, uh, her holy prophet, uh, noble Drew Ali? I, I, you probably went over that before, but prayer. Let me let's, let's uh, it, it wasn't directly regards to what you what you read about the temple, but it just made me think about that when I was reading it the other day. What happened to my hot spot? Uh, hold on, let me tap to the hot spot real quick, make sure I'm not glitching. One second. Oh no! Oh, this is it on. Why should you get one? Say Samsung or uh, S seven. Yeah, right. Put it. Yep. Galaxy S seven. All right. How am I? How do I sound? Am I? Am I clear? Mic check. Mic check. Am I back? Yeah. I'm back now? Okay. Well, I'm clear? Okay, cool. So let's go to the brother that's asking about the prayer. Let's analyze this so we can see what the brother is asking. So the Moorish American prayer. I allow the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I allow my protector, my guide, my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, noble Jew Ali. Amen. So what, what was your question? Uh, Yazir? A typo then, uh, because I was reading it in, in your in your book, the um, the, the tactical. I, I forgot the the, the, the title of it, but it said her holy prophet, more tactical. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, that, that I, was I, I, that was a typo. That was yeah, a typo. Was, okay, <laughs> yeah, that was a typo. Yeah, the the publisher I was dealing with at the time, it was crazy. I, yeah, they were saying like it was too late. Yeah, I, I, this, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm about to republish my book, and I'm about to correct. I was that. reading it though, and I thought I just overlooked that though. Nah, you on point. You on point with that. Yeah, that was a typo. Okay, yeah, when okay, I published sure. the book, published the book uh, initially like two years ago, and I was just just pushing it. But now that I'm about to get it, I'm about to publish it myself. I'm gonna correct all the typos. So, but yeah, now nah, you on point with that. That was a typo. Sure, it's, it's like, I, thought, I thought it was something metaphorical. I was, I was missing, man. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so we got we got the Quran questions for Moorish children. And when we say Moorish children, you know, you could be thirty and be a Moorish child. As far as if you if you're new to the space, you're you're a child. You're still a baby in this field, right? So, and also we can let the this can be we can let the children know about this as well, obviously. Who made you? Allah. When we're saying Allah, we're saying all matriarchal law pertaining to the Zodiac. Who is Allah? He is the father of the universe. Can we see him? No. Where is the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. Who is Noble Ali? He is Allah's prophet. What is a prophet? Prophet is a thought of Allah manifest in flesh. What is the duty of a prophet? To save nations from the wrath of Allah? Who is the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America? 
Noble Joe Ali. What year was the Morris Science Temple of America founded? 1913. But to go into more specific, that's not totally accurate, so we'll go into in-depth. In 1913, it was called the Old Canaanite Temple. 1925, Morris Holy Temple of Science. 1928, it was incorporated in the Morris Science Temple of America, just to be more specific. Where was the Old Canaanite Temple? New Newark, New Jersey. In 1913, it was founded. Where was Noble Joe Ali born? State of North Carolina, 1886. What is his nationality? Moorish American. What is your nationality? Moorish American. Why are we Moorish Americans? Because we are descendants of Moroccans born in America. For what purpose is the Moorish Science Temple of founded? To uplift fallen humanity. How did the Prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans, teaching them to be themselves? What is our religion? Islamism. Is that a new or is that an old time religion? Old time religion. What kind of flag is the Moorish flag? It is a red flag with a five point star in the center. What do the five points represent? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. How old is our flag? It's over 10,000 years old. Which is our holy day? Friday. Why? Because Friday is the day on which man was formed in flesh, and it is, and it was on Friday when he departed out of flesh. Who was Jesus? He was a prophet of Allah. Where was he born? In Bethlehem of Judah, in the house of David. Who was his father and mother? Joseph and Mary. Will you give a brief line or genealogy or bloodline through which Jesus came? Some of the great fathers through which Jesus came are Abraham, Boaz by Ruth, Jesse, King David, Solomon, Hezekiah, and Joseph by Mary. Why did Allah send Jesus to this earth to save the Israelites from the iron hand oppression of the Palestinian nations of Europe who were governing a portion of Palestine at the time? How long has that been? About 2,000 years ago. What was the nationality of Ruth? Ruth was a Moabitess. What was the modern name for the Moabites? Moroccan. Where is the Moroccan Empire? Northwest of Mexico. Today is the Americas. What is the modern name for a Mexico? Africa. What is the title given to our ruler in the Morocco? Sultan. Where do we get the name Jesus? From the East. What does the name Jesus mean? Justice. Did the angel give to the child that was called Jesus a holy name? Yes, but it cannot be used by those who were slaves to sin. Basically, you're not ready to receive. 37. Okay, 38 is over here. What is an angel? I'm on the right side. I'm on the right here. That look kind of look kind of crazy. What is an angel? An angel is a thought of Allah manifested in the flesh. What are angels used for? To carry messages to the four corners of the world, to all nations. What is our prophet to us? He is an angel of Allah who was sent to bring us everlasting gospel of Allah. What is the everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient forefathers by the prophet. What is the covenant of the God, of the great God Allah? Honor thy fathers and thy mothers, that their days may be long upon the earth. Land, which the Lord thy God Allah have given thee. At what age did Jesus begin to teach? At the age of 12. Where did he teach? India, Africa, Europe. How long did he teach? 18 years. What did Jesus say that will make you free? Truth. What is truth? Truth is aught. What is aught? Aught is Allah. Can truth change? Truth cannot change or pass away. What other name do we give to truth? The holy breath. What have you to say about the holy breath? All we can say is, it is great, it is good, it was, it is, and evermore to be. At what place on earth was the physical part of man formed? The Garden of Eden. Where is the Garden of Eden? In the land of Canaan, Canaan, in the city of Mecca. What is the modern name for the Garden of Eden? Mecca. What is the name for the first physical man? His name cannot be used only by the executive rulers of the AC, of the MSTA. What are the words AC of the MSTA? Adept Chamber of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Third Heaven. Now let's go on to Third Heaven. 
Because most people don't go into third heaven like I'm about to go into it. I just read this and just read the list and just keep going. Like people know what they like people people ain't gonna know what that means off top. Yeah, I don't. I, I nobody don't until you go into until somebody expresses it. And and it's people that read this like like robotic. So we're gonna go into more into depth. What is third heaven? So let's go to the metaphysical Bible. Same author Charles Fillmore that wrote the uh, well, Power of the Man. So heaven. This is the metaphysical Bible dictionary reference. Heaven, Christ consciousness. So when we say in third heaven, we're talking about back to what we, read, we were just reading earlier. Christ consciousness, the realm of divine mind, a state of consciousness in harmony with thoughts of God. Heaven is everywhere present. It is the orderly, the lawful adjustment of God's kingdom in man, body and affairs. Jesus, of all those claiming intimate acquaintance with spiritual things, gave heaven definite location. So Jesus gave instructions where heaven is. The kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> Jesus made it clear. So why are people so lost? It's the middleman. That's why we lost. The middleman. Heaven is within every one of us. A place, a conscious sphere of mind. Having all the attraction described or imagined as belonging to heaven. But this kingdom within is not material. It is spiritual. Heaven and earth, two states of mind. The ideal and the manifestation. According to Revelations 21.1, we are to have new ideals with manifestations and the earth to correspond. So we put, we put, <laughs> that means we're corresponding to the heavens. We need to be at a state where we're corresponding. That's why up here it says all the attraction described or imagined as belonging to the heaven. Once we ascend, our magnetism changes. We can control what type of magnet, our polarity, and we're connected to the heavens. We can tap in to those messages. To the, we can tap into the angels, the planets, the Elohim. So let's go back. Oh, yeah, we got the writer in the section coming here. Um, so now let's reread this. Um, a little background. It, was it some at the top? I'll go, what'd you say? Uh, Dia? Was it at the top on the left? Um, that's later. We're on 56. Oh. The stuff on the left is like 98. So it's kind of like the, the way it is on the PDF is kind of crazy. But so, yeah, we're on 56. Now we're on 57. Uh, also, no, no, no. Before I continue, now that we went into that demonstration, what is the name of the first physical man? His name cannot be used only by the executive rulers of the Adab Chamber. Now, the Adab Chamber will be the third heaven. So, somebody that's an Adab is just somebody that knows information to a competent degree, right? So, a competent person would know that the third heaven is within. So that's the actual man that knows himself has tapped into the third heaven. The actual man is not the body. No. Who were Adam and Eve? They are the mothers and fathers of the human family, Asiatics and Muslims. Where did they go? They went into Asia. What's the modern name given to their children? Asiatics. Who was guarding the holy city of Mecca today to keep it? To keep the unbelievers away. Angels. What is the prophet? Well, I mean, what is the modern name for those angels? Asiatics. What is the shade of their skin? Olive. Are the Moorish Americans any relation to those angels? Yes. We all have the same father or mother. Give names that are given to the descendants of Adam and Eve. Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast. What is the devil sometimes called? The lower self. How many selves are they? Two. Name them, higher self and lower self. What people represent the higher self? The angels who protected the city of Mecca. Or just, you can, you just say the Moors. What people represent the lower self? Those who were cast out of the holy city and those who, and those who accept their teachings. What is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues and harmonies of life. 
and breeds justice, mercy, love, and righteousness are right. Can the higher self pass away? No. Why? Because it is Allah and man. What does the lower self breed? Hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and anything that harms. What did the higher self say to the lower self at one time when he met him? Where are you going, Satan? It's a conversation within. What was the answer the lower self gave to the higher self? I am going to and fro the earth seeking whom I could devour. Right? So if you're on your lower self and you are on murder time, theft time, anything that harms type of time, demon of course, time. you're on demon time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You seek to devour, be a vampire. Has he finished his task of devouring? Yes. When was his time declared out? When he nailed Jesus on the cross. What are the last words Jesus uttered? It's finished. Are we on 78? Mm -hmm. Let me go up. 78. It's all funky how they got this. So we're looking for 79. Yeah, right there. Oh, there we go. What did he have reference to? He had reference to the end of Satan. Did Jesus say that he would return to conquer him? Yes. What is the name of the person and to whom Jesus was first reincarnated? Prophet Muhammad the Conqueror. Now, why are we saying why are we saying it like that? Because he was the next person to reinforce the message of Yahshua at the level that he did it at this time. And then after him, Noble Jew Ali will be the next person. And the R, you know, 1912, 1915 was not. BC time. It wasn't 1400s. It wasn't, you know, we have somebody that we can say woke up our people up in numbers, huge numbers. And Nobu Ju Ali. Islam. Oh, Islam. The, 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 the next person that, that just picked up his teachings and, and did it on the magnitude as he did it, they're saying that's 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 him reincarnated. Yeshua reincarnated pretty much. You know? Right. Uh, yeah, his deeds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was Satan to be bounded then? Satan was to be bound in part. When was the head of Satan taken off? 1453. Byzantine. So we, we went over this before, but you can actually research the Byzantine or the Ottoman Empire and how they shut down Byzantine, how they shut down Constantinople or Constantine and the crew in 1450s. Um. Who was the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire at this time? Muhammad II. He shut down Constantine. Who remixed the Bible? Constantine and the crew. The Romans. Who was Yahshua saying, don't be like the Romans? Yes. See, 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 who are we saying today? Stop the Roman culture. Washington, D.C. What's D.C. stand for? District of Columbia. What's Columbia? The Roman goddess. Just look it up. Don't believe me. We're saying the same thing. Mm. Let's get back to our ancient ways. Right? Mm. Name some of the marks that were put upon the moors of Northwest by the European nations in 1774. Black, Negro, color, and Ethiopian. What is meant by the word Negro? Negro, a name given to the river in West Africa by the Moors because it contained black water. And of course, to a Going further, that's a monkey. Um, the tri triglodyte nigger is a strand of monkey. When we did our genetic experience, which most people know it as the Yakub experiments and all these things, they gave, they sprung forth mankind, modernly called Albion's or white people. It's a mixture of the triglodyte nigger and original man and woman, or you know, original genetics. What is meant by the word black? Black, according to science, means death. What does the word colored mean? Colored means anything that has been painted, varnished, and dyed, or stained. What does Ethiopia mean? Ethiopia means something divided. In that famous map that I always bring up, 
Let me see if I still got a cue that I think I shut it down. But um, it separated the land of Ham and Kush. I always show this. But that line that's separating Northwest Amexum from Southeast Amexum, or separating the Americas from what's today called Africa, Russia, China, that demarcation line is called Ethiopian. It's separating the land of Ham and Kush. It's not a nationality. Our brothers that are from that area are Abyssinian or Eritrean. Um, why? Because man is made in the image and after the likeness of God, Allah. What title does Satan give himself? God. Will you define the word white? White means purity. Purity means God and God means ruler of the land. To whom do we refer at times as being the great God, Allah? Or who do we refer at times as being the great God, Allah? Which means all law. All the laws that are in place. Well, the reason why the gravity, the reason why the planets are in orbit. The reason this summer, winter, fall. The reason it gets cold at night. The reason the days get longer in summer. The, the reason the days get shorter around this time. All, that's all law in effect. Is the devil made in the image of likeness of Allah? No, he is a shadow of our lower selves and will pass away. Who made the devil? Elohim. Who was Elohim? Elohim is the seven creative spirits that created everything that ever was, is, and ever more to be. I believe the last two were over here. So, what is the Elohim sometimes called? The seven eyes of Allah. And uh, like I said, it's been one of the last four weeks. It's also the seven Elohim, the seven archangels. Also refers to the seven eyes of Allah. How many days are in a circle? Seven. How many days are in creation? Seven. According to science, how many days are in a year? Seven. So those are the one-on-ones. Um, I'm going to open up for some Thoughts on that, statements on that, uh, before we transition to the last part of our demonstration and close out. Any thoughts on that, on the one-on-ones? What, what did it mean by the last um, the last question? If, uh, if seven, seven days make a year? or Because it's always Monday through Sunday. Or, well, I'll take that back. It's always uh, Sunday through, through Friday. Or, I mean, um, no, no. Through Saturday? It's always Saturday. Uh, Sunday through Saturday? Sunday through Saturday, yeah, yeah. Saturday. It's always Sunday through Saturday, right? Because it's, it's a six-day six day will be Friday. Uh -huh. Seven-day will be Saturday. So it's always the seven days. No matter how you look at it, it's just seven days. So disregard months and all that type of stuff. It's just a seven day. It's just seven days. Mm -hmm. Now, when we when we take seven days, seven days, seven days, four times, now we got what you the concept of what they call a lunar calendar, but it's still seven days. And matter of fact, back to um, Latin, each day means a planet. The day of Venus is Uranus. Friday is Uranus. Like mm -hmm. our, our Spanish speaking brothers that speak Spanish, they'll be like, "Oh, it's Uranus." Or Sabado, or Domingo, or Luna. Martes. Martes. When Martes. you study this, that's just saying the day of the moon, the day of Venus, the mm -hmm. day of Mercury. Mm -hmm. day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's seven planets reflected in this. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a way yeah. to, to look at it. Uh, that's what's meant by that as well. So okay. this is the rudder and the sextant. So I, I wanted to go into this. Um, some may have read this already, but if this is new, we're dealing with, it gives you a sense of our government structure. Um, and it's, it's inspiring to, to want to get back to this. So the Moorish rudder and sextant. So let's get into, let's get into this introduction. The rudder and sextant began as an idea to translate the titles and positions of the administration that we function under into our cultural customs or holy names. 
The project began with the revelation of the rudder of the Moorish coat of arms on the 12th of February, 1986, progressed into its research stages and was com completed with the publication of the rudder and sexton, a legal blueprint on the subjects of Islamic government and Moorish her heraldry. Completed on December 23rd, 1987, it has, it was a 22 month project which has been completed in time for the new administration. Its author was born in the year of the Moorish law, the, in the year the, lowest, the Moorish law was revealed. We hope this little book becomes an inspiration for both initiates and doctors of the law. Uh, this was written by the brother uh, Bashuri Malik El. Okay, so let's get straight into the, uh, so article one, concept. This is the rudder and section of the Moorish coat of arms for the Order of Islam, North Gate, its navigation blueprint for a Islamic um, government based upon our 12 signs of the Zodiac, Moorish constitutional law, and Islamic or Lemurian. So Islamic and Lemurian synonyms, Lemuria, Mu, Mauryan dynasty, cultural customs. It can be scaled so that the Moors can establish a mechanism by which to operate the ship of a state. So when we're saying the ship of a state, we're talking about the heads, the head of a state, body politic. Rather, we call them sheiks, sultans, emirs, sharifs, caliphs. This is a, a structure blueprint on how to structure the people involved in the temple. It starts as a study group, temple, evolves to government structure based on the participation of the members and what they're willing to do. We could take it to higher levels. So, um, be it on the level of association, organization, community, province, or state. Al-Dafa, the rudder. What is the rudder? It is that body of officers formed to administer and implement all services and procedures from the government to the people. This instrument of government acts as the oar or the tiller. Thus, it is the mechanism with to steer the ship of state through its activities. So, of course, we're given ship analogies and paralleling them to elected officials within our body policy our Moorish government structure. Okay. The sextant or the angle with measurement in its literal form is a navigational instrument used for measuring the uh, altitudes of celestial bodies. It has an arc graduated in sixths of a circle. Thus, in its conceptual use, it is the form of Moorish government that the body of officers shall take in order to act as a medium for the coordination, regulation, and delivery of services from the government to the people. It is taken from the Latin word sextus or sixth. So it's a science to how we even wake up to people. If we're part of an organization, Khalifa Society organization, all the members are deemed, well, that's why I always say we're deemed to get competent so we can deliver this information to the people. We're, if we organize that in such a way, it becomes more efficient. Or how we getting the info, info out. Article two. Sheikh CM Bay, our Moorish lawgiver and first caliph. So let me let me just back up. This um so Khalifa Society is a body politic. This information was given by a Moorish body politic called the Great Seal. Um, and in that structure, they had caliphs, etc. Hey, so so CM Bay was a caliph. So CM, oh no, you good? So CM Bay was a caliph in this body politic of the resurrected Moorish nation begins in the zodiac constitution with the twelve signs of the zodiac and the code of mathematics scaling from zero to nine, and the science of geometry comprised the constitution of the living Moorish nation of North America, referred to as Negroes, who ruled the world 
and the seven seas by the 12 signs of the zodiac and the science of the geometry. For 1196 years, it is also stated that the term Moor means navigator of the seven seas. Thus, all forms of Moorish government must be scaled according to the 12 signs of zodiac or mathematics, scaling from zero to nine or the science of geometry, or the science of navigation in order to truly be a Moorish form of government. So once again, how I said, everybody in here, like I'm Mercury. I know Brother Hassan is Mercury. Um, everybody has a ruling planet, which means we all have a natural way to do, like we naturally can do things well in our own unique way. So when it comes to community, we're going to look to see who does this the best, who does that the best. They need to be in this position. They naturally can do this. That's what. That's how government structure was. Uh, our communities, our states, kingdoms, empires were constructed. It was an observation of who can do this job the best naturally, and the people will elect accordingly. Um, the Great Seal federal government, upon scrutiny and examination, is based. Upon the science of geometry forming the geometric shape of a triangle, which has three points. Now, in government structure, executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch. And therefore, it definitely can be said that it is a Moorish form of government. However, the government functions according to slave master concepts and has assumes and maintains a de facto posture. Therefore, a transition into our cultural concepts and customs is definitely in order. Our bylaws by which we function confirms this and that they enjoin us thusly. All brothers and sisters are to promote Moorish arts and culture, including Moorish dress and social customs. That's why it's imperative that we be in our garb when we're walking on the earth plane. It's a magnetism when you do that. Now, in the concept, compromise the constitution of the living Moorish nation. The word living implies the activation of your laws and symbols and implement and implementation of your cultural customs. Back to like yesterday, we had a get together. The Moors came fezzed up, garb, any, all the people that were coming in to the cafe, they were coming in peeking like, oh, what's this? That was like, okay, these are the Moors. Like we look, we don't look like Negroes. We don't look like people that don't know how that culture it's a different space. Like, oh, man. Showing the customs and, and demonstrating unity is what gets us to grow. Being consistent, which gets us to grow. The word living implies activation of laws and symbols. I just read that. Let me go back to where. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not to do so is to bring upon oneself properties of stagnation and death. So when you're not honoring your mothers and fathers, you're not in your habit, you're not in your cultural garb, you don't, you're not competent of your own history and culture, stagnant in death. Thus, the key to the Moorish form of government lies in the term ruled by wisdom and moral intelligence and based upon the Zodiac Constitution and the principles of navigation and geometry. Have we fashioned this rudder and sextant discourse? Now the doctors of Moorish law may take it and implement it into their societies. So we have Moorish cardinal principles, of course, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And then we have the Arabic, uh, or Aramaic um, way of pronouncing it as well. So let's look at some things here. Let's look at, we have a column, the title of Nabi, would just be saying a prophet or a, 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 revel, a revelator. The color would be white to represent that. A caliph or a vice regent would be an enlightened her. Enlightened her. Color that we used culturally would be opal. A sultan would be the ruler or the activator. We got the charcoal. Now we now they applied this to the fez. You got charcoal fez, white fez, purple fez, blue green. It's kind of like uh, martial arts with the belt. You got black belt, white belt. It signifies certain levels or status within the community. Um, Pajabi. 
So if we now once we get our physical temple, we're gonna have to turn it up a little bit. We're gonna need muftis at the door, people to escort people to their seat, a lot of demonstrations going on. Um secretary, treasurer, assistant, grand she, like, you know, we've been we're on a certain level right now, just getting competent as a study group, but it's gonna come a point in time where we need to ascend to more structure. So hijabi or a keeper of the door or the awakener, you got gray or gray fez, a mirror or a commander or a leader, purple fez. Um, we got a pilot. Of course, we ain't got no planes and stuff right now, but at, time, at one point we did. All right, so we've been navigator, blue fez, quasi or the magistrate or the executor, green fez, the wazir or the prime minister. Or be the spokesman, yellow fez, the sutra or the shield or protector, orange fez, a sharif or the nobleman and the enforcer, similar to the mufti. Um, called a sharif like a head mufti. That's how I look at it. Is that well, where they get like sheriff from, like the enforcer? The chairman? Sheriff? Is that uh, where they get the word sheriff? Yeah, from? yeah, exactly. Sheriff comes from sharif, which was a Moorish uh, elected That's official true. or position in government. And even the star of the sheriff department is a star, right? How many points is on there? Right? Five mm -hmm. points. So all this is more science. Nothing is not more science. Razem or the recorder, right? Secretary of recorders. We got live meetings. We got people that's taking the minutes. What were the bullet points of today's meeting? It's the person that would take those minutes. We're talking about organization and structure. Islam, I got a question. Oh, yeah, what's, go ahead, go ahead. what's the number right next to the color mean? Like the, the one, the two, the six. Uh, oh, it looks like it's going up from zero let's go up, up right? Let's go up to the top. Let's see. Yeah, up oh, to nine. Okay. Yeah. So remember in the beginning, it was like the science of zero to number nine? I don't know uh, if you recall. Yeah. No, the beginning of this, this, this book right here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I think I, I may have missed that. I'm sorry. And then when you're dealing with um, electronics, if you're dealing with resistors, they're color-coded with a color, which determines their uh, resistance level. So it's a blend of what they did here, uh, this body politic called the Gray Seal, how they, how they put this together. Um, where I leave off at. Okay, so Mufti. Mm -hmm. Man at arms. So the Sharif, that's why I said the Sharif will be the head Mufti. Um, but the general Mufti would be just somebody we have our temple meeting, they'd be at the front door that usher the people in, you know, make sure there ain't no riffraff coming into the temple or sacred space, etc. We got the wazir, the minister, implementer, red fez, Wali, advisor, investigator, red fez. So let's go into a little in depth. So the Nabi, a prophet, one who has received direct inspiration to the mind or by the divine impression upon the heart. A Razul would be a messenger or one who has received a book of inspiration to transmit to the people. A caliph, a successor, a lieutenant to the vice regent or a deputy. It is the title given to the successor to the prophet who was vested with the power or authority in matters of the state or the community. So long as he rules in the conformity with law. Sultan, the word used for the ruler or king, its literal meaning is strength or might. Hajib, or the keeper of the door. Amir, a ruler, a commander, a chief or nobleman. It includes the various high offices in a Muslim state. Amir, I like that. Sayara, to move, to start on a journey, a pilot or navigator. Quasi, a magistrate or a chief judge elected by the people or appointed by the ruler of the community or state. The office must be held by one who is an adult, a free moor, a Muslim, a sane moor, an unconvicted and, and unconvicted of slander. It is befitting that a moor not covet position of quasi. So don't get big-headed in your position if you are elected to this type of thing. 
the quasi must exercise the office in a place where the public has access. He or she must not accept gifts. Okay, we'll let somebody else in here. So he or she may not accept gifts Except. except from relatives and old friends. A woman may exercise the office of quasi except in the administration of punishment or retaliation. Wazir Arez, the first, the prime, or most prominent. The uh -huh. Wazir Arez, the prime minister, or one who bears the responsibilities of administration of government. Somebody, does, did you have a question? Somebody have a question? Sure. I thought I heard Okay, so the soldier, the sergeant at arms of the parliament, he bears the duty of protecting the sultan and the council of elders, as well as the flag, the talisman, and all vestments of power. He is the executive officer of a select company of mufti chosen to function as a Howard Joe Harrison or the chamber of guardians. Sharif, executive officer or police and head mufti uh, okay it is it's the head mufti of the training academy he carries out the decisions of the quasi has administrative powers and is responsible for the general public safety of our community Razim a recorder or keeper mufti the officer who executes the law wazir a vizier the principal minister in an Islamic Moorish or Lumerian society there are three views concerning the etymology of the word. Some derive it from wazir, a burden, because the wazir bears the burden of the state. Others take it from wazir, a refuge, because the ruler has recourse to counsels of the wazir. Lastly, the back or strength, because the ruler is strengthened by his wazir, wazir as the human frame is strengthened by the back. The post, the posts of wazir was sometimes occupied by the officer of the pen and sometimes by an officer of the uh, mashraf. Wali is an advisor, a counselor, commissioned and placed in charge thereof. So advisors and counselors, we're talking about psychologists, not only advising on what to do structurally, governmentally, but we're talking about our people need counseling. It's people that aren't as strong mentally, emotionally, and they need just a brotherhood and sisterhood. We need level-headed people to counsel our people. Um, let me check the chat. I hear somebody in the see. Islam. Oh, Islam, Sister Indigo. Peace and love. Prophet, divinely inspired and chosen by Almighty Allah to uplift fallen humanity. And to act as a bearer of glad tidings to the people, as well as a revelator of light. This position cannot be occupied by just anyone, nor can anybody be elected or appointed to do it. Caliph. He is a successor to the prophet. And that and is either nominated by the prophet or selected by a grand council of sultans. There is only one who occupies this position, and the Moors must not allow the arising of a second. The Grand Sultan can perform the functions and duties of Caliph. A. He should express the right title by making claim. B. He should be supported by the populace or the, or the community. C. There should be a ratification by the learned elders. D. He should be nominated on the demise of the prophet or his successor. He shall be protector of the sacred relics. Sultan, the ruler of the people. And when we say ruler, that's just what it is, a measuring stick. That's what you do with a ruler, you measure. It's not a tyrant. It's the measuring stick of the community. The community elected a Sultan because he's the best person to do diplomacy, represent the community, and he was elected because of that. He has power and authority derived from the Zodiac Constitution. 
and his commands in accordance with law must be carried out. He must be a sheik, 50 years of age, minimum. So to be a soldier, you at least 50. And his reign is perpetual unless he is overthrown by the people. He is the commander in chief of all Moorish military forces and place guard and police force and the army and marine forces. But once again, this is this is when it was an empire. This is to show you this should this should inspire us to to see what we unified and how how we carried out uh, the governmental structure. Hajib. Chosen from among the elders to assist the sultan in his work. The hajib is in charge of the duty of burial. So, you know, people dying. Um, we hold services for our people that pass away or transition. We hold funerals. Presides over the council of elders in absence of the sultan. Amir, leader and chief executive officer of the city state. Elected by the people to implement those programs, which are in the best interest of the community. The emir resides over the executive branches and administration cabinet. The position is perpetual unless there is a recall referendum by the people. He is the commander of the conventional external forces, the army and the marine. Sierrana, a pilot helmsman who was chosen to direct the Hajarato Burj or astrological chamber. The Quasi and Amir are senior officers. The Hajib Saraha are assisting officers. The Sutra and Sharif and the Rayad are junior officers. Quasi, Supreme Justice or Chief Magistrate of the community, primary abholder of law, and executor of the policy of the Sultan and the Grand Council. The Quasi adjudicates matters concerning the affairs of the people. The Quasi is elected by the people and can only be removed by the Sultan or the Grand Council if found to be corrupt. The Quasi is the commander of the uh, Mushraf or the police force or internal security, in-house security, in security of the community or temple or nation state or body politic, whatever you want to call it, or tribe, all the same thing. Wazir Aureus, the coordinator of administration over various ministries within the city-state, chief counsel to the emir, an executive officer of the conventional military forces. The Reyes serve for the duration of the emir's tenure. So I'm going to stop right here, actually, because it's actually 30 pages. Uh, we could pick back up on this next week. But I wanted to give a sense of when we say an organization, this is we're looking, we're looking at organization. And when people stick to the script of the organization, it's a powerful conglomerate. It's a powerful force. Right. Uh, any thoughts, comments, statements on this space before we close out in prayer here? Was this organization, um, was Noble Ali a part of this organization? Is this the same CM Bay that was that was with him? CM Bay was not. Uh, CM Bay was around after uh, Noble Ali transition. He oh, okay. around, yeah, he wasn't around at the same time. But this particular uh -oh. body politic is called yeah. the Great Seal. The Great Seal. Yeah, I have people. a question. Who was the brother that went with Noble Ali to the? Um, to the was it the Pan American? What, what was his name? Oh, that was um the guy that uh damn what's his dude name? He was the chauffeur. He was a, he was a driver. Am I getting that confused? <laughs> no, no, no. Kirkland Bay. His name Kirkland, was Kirkland okay. Bay. Yeah. yeah, he he knew about eight languages, so he yeah. was the interpreter. He was the interpreter for the prophet in the temple. Mm. Um, so when he went to Cuba. The Cuban, the Cuban president invited Noble Ali to the Pan American Conference. Yeah, um, and he was an ambassador for our people, uh, letting them know like it's Moors up here. Everybody ain't talking about they black up here. It's, it's, and it's a lot of us, you know. The whole 
uh, it was called Detroit, Chicago, Indiana, Ohio, and it was trending south. It was temples, more science temples everywhere. It was over, like I said, it was 10,000 more than Chicago alone on a daily basis. So he, uh, he went to an international platform and uh, basically let, let them know, like, look, we, we woke. The Moorish Empire is back. We intact. We're mobilized. It's not just in congressional records. We're actually active out here. And it's a lot of us. We got businesses. Right. We we got we got structure like what we're reading right here, similar to what we're reading right here. And it's an yeah. active government. Um uh, but th this is this particular document was later after Noble Jewel Ali. This was um, like I say, established by a Moorish body politic called the uh, Great Seal. And they provided this document for kind of like what I'm telling you, to aspire, to aim towards, et cetera. You know what I mean? The blueprint, kind of. Yeah, blueprint. Um, any other okay. thoughts, statements? But yeah. Stop. Anybody else had any uh, comments? You got something? No, I'm just wondering what we're doing for our next gathering. That's all. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, let me start talking about that. Think about that. Well, let me just close out prayer and we kind of talk about that. Let's see. Right. Yeah, these are, yeah, minimal standards of government. I'm going to close out in prayer. Um, Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector my guide and my salvation by night and by day, who was holy prophet, noble Jew Ali. Amen. So let me, uh, let me stop the recording and then, uh, we can kind of brainstorm most of the stuff.